Hi there guys, welcome again to this video tutorial about uh, 2D game development uh, Okay uh, What I did in, to the games that I added a number of surprises and uh, If you're not familiar with that, it's a number of uh, Graphics that represent the motion of your character in this case. We have um, these uh, graphics right here uh, in the previous code, I, I put all these images in separate files. Here, I combine them together into one uh, image, and uh, Agate Clip will uh, split uh, these uh, for you. Okay, so uh, you, you define uh, the uh, sprite image, and of course, you set the transparent color, and later on, you just load the image. So, let us have a look here. Where is that? So this is over here, over here. Okay. So what you want to do um, before that, maybe I should show you what I, I did to to the base creature class. Uh, if you remember, base creature uh, contains uh, information regarding uh, the motion of your uh, car uh, of your character, um, its uh, graphics and stuff like that. Anyway. So uh, I did a number of changes. Uh, uh, one of them is that I I put the HP effect not in the enemies but in the base class, okay, uh, which is here. Also, I created a sprite uh, data type here. Uh, sorry, a sprite object right here, and this will hold all the graphics you want to display. Uh, that uh, uh, that uh, and this will represent your character. Okay. Um, I did a number of changes as well. For example, update location will receive an object, and there will be. You might want to do some processing based on that object. We're going to see how this works. Okay. So let's go to our hero. In this case. So what did I do here? Um, First of all, when you create the object, you don't have to uh, load each file individually. Instead, you just create the sprites using uh, a single line of code, just new sprite, and you specify the PNG file with the, the size of the sprite. And AgateLib is smart enough to split the image into squares, each uh, of 32 by 32 dimension. Okay, and uh, there will be a number of frames. So, in this image, we have this is frame zero, frame one, two, uh, three, and so on. Okay, so um, this is the first thing. The uh, update location um, works a little bit differently. I modified that. So. The modification is for uh, identifying the correct frame. Now, uh, you can see here, uh, this part is checking for the correct frame. Check if the character is jumping. In that case, uh, you are going to use either this frame for jumping uh, to left or this frame for jumping to right. Uh, if not, you are going to choose one of the uh, walking frames um, and these will, will, will appear in order okay and uh, if the character is standing uh, and it's not changing its location in that case uh, in that case just <coughs> show the, the standing uh, the standing frame that's all um, yeah. the rest is uh, the same there is nothing into it Okay, so this is how uh, you work with sprites. Um, and by the way, uh, when when you set, uh, when you change, uh, when you want to change the uh, the sprite, uh, let me show you here. Let's go to the base creature and uh, let's go to the rendering routine. So this is render render creature. Now you just say uh, to the sprite object that the current sta uh, the current frame number so the render stage if you, rem uh, if you remember from the previous uh, uh, code here um, this is the render stage which represent the frame number 
uh, is being set here okay and later on you just tell the library or the sprite object to draw itself and it's gonna render just that frame for you okay it's as simple as that okay uh, what I did as well um, let me show you this stupid enemy which you are already familiar familiar with here I just create a sprite of course and also I pass the parameter e1 uh, sorry the file name e1 and again uh, for the update location I modified the code so that uh, it will uh, it, it will show the correct uh, frame okay now I created another type of enemy so let me show you here so this is one type let me show you where is it this is the stupid enemy this is the new, the new graphics uh, you can create these with GIMP it requires some time but uh, I think GIMP is okay and this is the other enemy and uh, this one's a little uh, I put a little bit of intelligence into th this one and I'm gonna show you what I mean by that okay so um, let me go to this one I called it persistent enemy okay so this one will receive an object here okay and this object uh, I'm gonna assume it's the information of the user now the persistent enemy works like this if uh, it is gonna follow the user okay it's gonna follow your hero and if it finds the hero on a higher platform it's gonna jump it will it will be more likely to jump into that platform if it is uh, in a, on a, in a lower platform it won't it will not try to jump so let me show you this here so uh, check this out let me see um, okay so if you remember from the stupid enemy this is the same code uh, of stupid enemy except it's been a little bit improved so uh, if if the side counter is smaller than or equal to zero this means now your uh, the enemy should change his direction um, yeah so um, here we are checking we are checking if the location of the enemy is less than the location of our character here if so it means our uh, the enemy should move to the right in order to attack you so we set the size to zero otherwise we need the enemy to move to the left okay so we set it to one this is the first thing the other thing uh, we need to know is about jumping um, where is that I wait a minute the jump code um, yeah this is the part where we uh, where I did the jump code okay so if the enemy is standing and the location or the y location of the enemy is uh, uh, greater uh, than your character it means the enemy is on a lower platform then I perform a jump okay so here uh, this is this is the condition when the j jump could happen. Uh, there's a, a random number is being generated, and there is a probability. And check the probability here. the The number should uh, the random number should be above 900. If not, the random number should be above 995. Okay, so it will be less probable to jump if uh, the enemy is above your current platform. So, given these two simple conditions which is uh, this is the first condition and this is the second condition uh, this type of enemy will follow you wherever you go okay um, let me just show you the last changes and then I, I'm going to demonstrate this so here um, what I did let me show you here where is it so, uh, of course, I updated the code here to include the, the second type of enemy. And also, where is it? 
where's the update location now the update location function now receives your character information test char uh, and because of that it's gonna follow your character okay so uh, this is all the updates I did to the code now I guess it's time to see how this works um, maybe I'm gonna create uh, let me see we will have about 50 enemies uh, of both types okay so let's demonstrate that let's go here double click here hit test now take a look here okay so this is our guy in the tuxedo and now as you can see when I am jumping the enemies are jumping uh, after me okay and uh, yeah they are more likely to jump here come on just leave me alone and this one should fall okay and he just fell and uh, not only that if, if I go down a little bit you can see that later on they will change uh, their their side and they will follow me again okay so this one's trying to jump but there is no platform so that uh, he can reach me okay this one is jumping down this one's gonna reach me in a minute okay so um, yeah and this one will, will, will keep trying okay there's another one so uh, on the other hand if you look at the other type of enemy which is this dummy one you can see it changing side even though my character is in front of him um, yeah so this is how you can add a little bit of AI to your to your enemies and uh, also this is how you do some uh, sp uh, few sprites yeah okay uh, one last thing regarding sprites um, the way I created these sprites is using GIMP so uh, this is GIMP okay as you can see these are the sprites uh, you can uh, just go and show the grid okay uh, go to tools uh, sorry image and configure grid and here you give it size 32 by 32 and select specific color so that you distinguish each frame okay so you can see these lines will show you where um, where uh, the character will be placed so you want to make sure that each character sits exactly in one in one square okay in the correct location and after you finish the first row you can just copy and uh, flip this one uh, to, to get the other side it's as simple as that okay so I hope you'll find uh, this useful uh, if you're interested you can find the source code in, uh, on the website um, if you want to create your own characters um, and uh, contribute to the project by uh, let's say uh, designing few models um, sending some ideas uh, please do thank you for watching and uh, have a nice day bye bye